Good morning. My name is Adrian Larkin. I participate here at Mentor United Methodist Church in the chancel choir and had the opportunity to sing last week with Dan Gallagher. In previous years, I helped with youth ministry and performed several concerts here to help raise money for the church. Please take a moment to fill out a connect card and or sign the attendance pad in your pew. And now please stand with me as we join in our call to worship. For the believer, the phrase mount up with eagles, wings like eagles. God promises to help us in times of need. Rise above the difficulties of life and to trust in the divine assistance that is always available. We are capable of rising above our circumstances and achieving great
seated. Please pray with me the opening prayer as printed in your bulletin. How great thou art! Your power is throughout the universe displayed. Almighty God, as we gather to lift you high, we remember our world today. While we are happy and joyful in spirit, our world is in constant disarray. Lord, guide our efforts to serve you first and keep your holy word. Bless us, O Lord, with your grace and favor so that we would enjoy all of your creation. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, the children are invited to stay in worship or are dismissed to go to Sunday school. Good morning, church. I am honored and pleased and just as happy as a chicken with his first feather to be here this morning. Um, I greet you with Jesus' joy. I am Pastor Ivy Smith, associate pastor here at Menor United Methodist Church. Uh, I say welcome to any visitors that we have, and I thank you. Any visitors? Anyone here for visiting a guest of someone or Thank you for choosing Mentor as your place of worship this morning as we all come together to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. I will say that I am glad to be home. I was on vacation um, last week and um, thank uh, Pastor Tammy for stepping in and uh, taking over for me for uh, preaching. But I am glad to be here. I spent time with my sister in Georgia, and we actually uh, drove coming back. I flew down and drove from uh, south of Atlanta, south of Atlanta here, and it was a very nice drive, so that made it, made it wonderful. Um, she is coming back here to Ohio um, for a baby shower. We're having a baby in the family, baby shower today, so doing a lot of traveling, and like I said, I am glad to be home. People are always hospitable and, you know, extend all the courtesies that they can, but it's good to be home. It's good to be home in your own place and in your own stuff. I would have you to know that on next week, we begin a new series starting Wrestling, wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith. Um, and we do have a number of Bible studies going on during that six-week time. Um, I will be switching and going over to Modern. Pastor Steve will be here. And through that series, we actually have the book um, available in the office if you'd like to purchase it. But we have a class on Monday, we have one on Tuesdays, and then on Thursdays, um, just to vary for the times on that subject of wrestling with doubt, finding faith. Um, I invite you to uh, get the book and do a study on your own or just do the reading on your own or join in with the classes and then we all come together for the culmination of our expression on a Sunday morning during that series. I thank you for your time and energy on this series that we're uh, going through today with children's books stories. This book that we have today, I want to invite you at 1210, as soon as the service is over, to come over to the library and I'll be reading uh, the book for us. Um, we had a number of people at the 1010 hour, um, but if you would like to hear it in its entirety, um, certainly come over and listen to the story. As we approach the throne of grace in prayer, I would have us be mindful of those who are in bereavement always first, first and foremost, and lifting up the family of Don Brown and the family of Robert Lee in their passing this week. Let us come together in silent prayer.
O gracious God, giver and lover of our souls, O God, almighty and creator of all things, from everlasting to everlasting, Lord, we recognize that you are God. Lord, we come as, as humbly as we know how. Lord, we come because you are the one, the only one, who has the power, the ability, and the concern of our lives. Lord, we put our full trust in you. And so we pray. Oh God, we pray for our church. We pray for each and every person that is under the sound of my voice. Lord, we pray for those who are not here, our extended family, and those that we know are unable to be here. Oh God, we ask a special blessing over all of those who are touched by this church, Men are United Methodists. Oh God, we ask a special blessing over our city, over our state, over our nation, and over the world. Oh God, we ask a special blessing over ourselves. Yes, ourselves. Lord, we ask for even more. Although we are unworthy, Lord, we ask for more. We ask for more grace and more peace and more love, more comfort, more attention, more forgiveness. For, Lord, we ask for all that you have to give. Lord, we plead and we beg for your deliverance. Lord, we ask a special blessing over those who are not in the ark of safety, those who yet have to give their lives to you. Oh God, prick their spirit, prick their heart in such a way that they turn and cry out what it is that they must do to be saved. Lord, allow us to walk in the forgiveness that you give. For Lord, if we could turn back the hands of time, if we could stop the watch, Lord, we would go back and make things right. We would go back and change what we said or what we did. But Lord, what we can do now is ask for your grace. Lord, ask for your forgiveness and then stand and clear our shoulders and hold our head high and walk forward knowing that you have redeemed us. Oh God, allow us to move and meander throughout time knowing that you know best for us. Lord, this we pray and all these things all the things that are in the recesses of our heart. Lord, we lift them up to you. This is our prayer. This is our petition. Let us all say together, amen. Amen. The details of how we can put our faith into action can be found in our weekly update and website. Here are just some of the highlights as we go into the world as the body of Christ. Join us on Friday, September 6th for a mentor football game and on September 13th for a Riverside game to support our students and students of the community. Additional details are on our website. September also means the beginning of choir season. Please reach out to Amy Bender if you would like to get involved in chancel choir, men's choir, or bell choir. Join us for a new sermon series class called Wrestling with Doubt, Finding Faith on Thursday nights from 6 to 7.30 p.m., September 12th through October 17th. Reach out to Pastor Steve if you have any other questions. Mentor 101 Exploring New Membership Classes will be offered twice in two two-hour opportunities. You can attend either one of these classes on Saturday, September 14th from 9.30 to 11.30 or on Tuesday, September 17th from 6 to 8 p.m. New Member Sunday will be held September 22nd during all four services. Let us know by Thursday, September 19th, if you are interested in becoming a member. The church office will be closed tomorrow in observance of Labor Day, as well as this Friday for the staff retreat. These are just some of the ways God is making a difference in people's lives through Mentor United Methodist Church. 
through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness. You will find a new giving card in the new pocket in front of you. As some of us have chosen to give online, we still want to acknowledge that giving is an act of worship. As the ushers come forward, you may place your offering or giving card into the offering plate as it is passed to you. Please join me in prayer. God in heaven, we present these our gifts to your church. Guide this ministry so the world is better because of our benevolence. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given back to thee. Amen. seated. I say thank you to our sound technician, our liturgist, our musician, our soloists, our greeters, ushers, and our stewards for their participation and giving of their service today. Children's book series, Fly, Eagle, Fly. Our scripture passage this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. It is found on page 818. 818 in your pew Bible there. Verses 16 through 21. 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 21. And it says this. So, from now on, we regard no one with a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed us to the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. And I should give the benediction, and we all exit. (laughs) <laughs> Nobody cheer on that. Nobody <laughs> cheer on that. But yet this passage is so, so full and so succinct. Paul preaching to this Corinthian church, to me, is the, the sermon that we need right here at Mentor. He has committed us to the message of reconciliation. Mm-hmm. We are at the close of our children's book series today. And it ends with the story, Fly, Eagle, Fly. Um, Once I give the concept of this book, this story, it may sound familiar to you in some way, and you may have to pull from your reservoir of children's stories. Um... But you, you probably have, um, I don't know, I, I guess I consider kind of like a recipe of uh, one recipe for apple pie kind of goes this way and another goes that way and another goes that way and another goes that way. Uh, but we kind of all come together on apple pie. You know, it, it, some people call it a cobbler and it looks like a cobbler, but it's a little different on top and a little different on the bottom, but it comes out to be cobbler. This story comes out to be in the same vein of what I believe is what was told in one session and one section and one section of the country, of the world maybe, and then brought together various ways. My mind went first, um, you know, of course, to the the songs that kind of lend itself to either an eagle or flight and um, our gospel hymn that says, I'll fly away, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. That's one of those, um, I will call them vacuuming songs, (laughs) dusting and cleaning songs that you could just keep doing, the buzzing around driving songs. Um... And, and that song itself, it speaks of um, th- how, how we look toward the eternal life, that it will be a transition of just gliding and just flying away, just being lifted up. Someone stopped me after the first service and said, Pastor Ivy, you did not sing. Um, she said, fly, eagle, fly. And I said, fly, eagle, fly. I don't know if I know that one. Um, but it's Fly Robin Fly. It's a 70s song. Uh-oh, I see some heads. Uh-huh. Fly Robin Fly. Dun, 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 dun. Up, up to the sky. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, 70s. I like 70s music. I, I find that I'm, um, when I'm on the Sirius uh, satellite, I kind of go through everything, and then I go back to the 70s. That's a good one. And I get away from it, and I go back, and that's a good one. Then, of course, you know, that great song that I think every band in high school have always played, I Believe I Can Fly. You know, the R. Kelly song. I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I dream about it every night and day. Then the one that's um, um, Bette Midler, about the wind beneath my wings. Yeah. Yeah, so many songs, so many songs that 
was thinking, um, I looked online um, uh, earlier, and I kind of got away from it, but Lenny Kravitz did one. Um, I want to fly away. I don't know how many know. <laughs> I might be getting into a different genre for you than, you, than you've been, but Lenny Kravitz and uh, Leonard Skinner even did a song about um, what it was his, Free Bird or something, yeah. But they go on and on and on. I think I put in their flight, and it said the top 50 songs. Then I put birds, and then it said, you know, the top 100 songs. And then um, being lifted up, all of that. And they all came to that same type of theme. And, you know, Frank Sinatra sings, come fly with me, come fly away. Yeah, you can go on and on on these songs on flight and flying. And for our purposes today, I kind of zeroed in on three versions of this story, um, which includes ours. And the first one was the story of the young eagle. And it says, a young eagle was attempting to fly for the first time. He was strong enough, had enough feathers, yet he hesitated, lacking one thing confidence. Standing safely in the middle of the nest, he jumped out hesitatingly with wings wide open, only a few inches. The next day, he jumped a little bit higher. The wind caught his wings, and he rose a little bit and then landed safely in the nest again. Eventually, he gained enough confidence to jump off the edge of the nest and then glide it to a lower bit of the rough landing but he hadn't gone too far. He had to soar when the wind came right behind him and picked him up, never to return to that nest. The second story talks about there is a story about a little eagle that fell out of its nest and landed in a chicken yard. The eagle grew among the chickens, and although it looked different, he learned to walk like a chicken and eat like a chicken. One day, a young eagle looked up into the sky, and he saw this beautiful eagle flying, and he said to himself, oh, I would love to do that. And at that same time, the eagle that was soaring overhead looked down and saw the little eagle, flew down and asked, what are you doing here? The little eagle replied, I'm just here in this chicken yard where I've always been. The great eagle looked and said, spread your wings. Do what I do. Follow me. He opened his wings to full span, and the little eagle had been living amongst these chickens and turkeys for so long that he didn't know what he was able to do. He lifted and flew off into the sky, never to return to the chicken yard again, he flew off into the purpose that he was created to do and be. And our story today, Fly, Eagle, Fly. This is the cover of our story. After a stormy night, a farmer searched for his, last, his lost calf, finding a little baby eagle that was blown out of its nest. He takes it home and raises it with his chickens. When a friend comes to visit one day, he tells the farmer that that eagle should be flying high and not staying on the ground. But the eagle walks like a chicken, it eats like a chicken, it even talks like a chicken, the farmer replied. Twice the farmer's friend tries to get the eagle to fly, but sees the chickens on the ground and drops down each time. At last, the friend, followed by the farmer, carries this young eagle back into the mountains to the places where they found him, the places of the great birds on a rocky ledge just before sunrise. As the air is filled with the golden light and the sun appears, the friend cries out, Fly, eagle, fly. And the eagle raises its wings and soars outward, out into sight. 
I like all of these stories, and like I said, it's a, a variation of the theme that eagles are meant to fly. The Bible says a lot about eagles. In fact, there are 30 references in the Old Testament, four references in the New Testament of eagles. One of my um, greatest thoughts in is a prayer that was done years ago by um, a United Methodist member, minister in uh, Houston, Texas, Reverend Zan Holmes, and he preached that, oh, if I had wings like a dove where I could fly away and just be at rest. I think I was in high school when I when I listened to the tapes of that um, from a session of Black Methodists for Church Renewal. Oh, that I had wings like a dove or like an eagle, then I would fly away and be at rest. That is from Psalms 55 and 6. Next to the lion... The eagle is the most admired creature in the animal kingdom. The lion is the king of the jungle, and the eagle is the king of the sky. Has this incredible strength. They're truly one of the most remarkable creatures that God has created. With this eight-foot eight wingspan ability to lift at least 40, 50 pounds. Many have regarded this eagle as a symbol of the two kinds, the imperial eagle and the gold eagle. Christians, of course, use this symbol when they speak of the kinds of birds that have power and strength and ability to go. The keen eyesight of an eagle in the scriptures lend us synonymously to think of God and his oversight of all things. I read somewhere that even airline pilots will say that out of the window, every once in a while they will see, even at their level, an eagle go by, of having this view of everything at all times, able to just swoop down and get a chipmunk or swoop down and get a small mouse from that view. My mind goes to God's view of us being able to watch us all at the same time from a view of security. The Apostle Paul is the founding pastor of this church at Corinth. Corinth is this forward-thinking, um, culturally diverse influx of rich and poor and young and old, this uh, what, what they would call uh, cosmopolitan. I tried to look up what does cosmopolitan mean now to us. <laughs> it just is that uh, center of people coming in, people going out with change and with progress. And it is here that Paul gives this message to the Corinthian church. He wrote this letter in Ephesus, but yet it went to the Corinthians. And exactly, he made four letters. We have 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, but he wrote four letters. And it says in the fifth chapter, in the ninth verse, that I wrote one letter and then I lost it. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's three. But two and three are put together to make one, which is 1 Corinthians that we have now, and then 2 Corinthians comes out of that fourth one. I'm always thinking when I, when I uh, come to those, those books that are doubled like that, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles, um, 1 and 2 Samuel, that in, in a debate or in a conversation and you say all that you have to say, that person says all that they have to say, 
and then you think about it for a while, a couple days go by or a week goes by and you call him back and you say, and another thing, I wanted to tell you this. So, 2 Corinthians is that other thing that he wanted to tell the church. And he tells them that it is important for them to work out the affliction, work out the anguish that they have in their heart. That he would not have them be in sorrow, but he would have them to be uplifted from the reconciliation that God offers. There's just so much in this 2 Corinthians book that talks about false apostles, it talks about deceitful workers, it talks about people masquerading, trying to be like Christ's apostles. And then he talks about being in Christ. Just be in Christ and all things changes. Everything that's old is passed away. And all that that is new is there for the taking. The contrast between this old and new is just so apparent with Christ and then us having our, our problems of crime and for self-destructive behaviors and addictions and all the violence in the world, all those things that come up on our news and in our, on our phones every day, all the time. He addresses this by telling us to be uplifted like like the eagle, be uplifted. I love really the, the, the third story because I think it tells more, the fly, eagle, fly, our story for today. I think it tells more about the friend than it does actually the eagle. The eagle uh, tried to fly and he didn't and he was kind of comfortable where he was with all the chickens and he had everything he needed. There was no need to really spread his wings and fly. Every day was the same. But uh, the consistency of the friend to me kind of struck me of coming back once and saying, I see the potential in this bird coming back again. I still see the potential in this bird. And he comes back again and says, I still see the potential in this bird. And then he takes them and put him in an environment where he can thrive and not only thrive, but soar to new heights. Oh, friends, I tell you today, I believe that it is God being in that friend type situation to come again and again and again as many times as possible to lead us to a place where we can be uplifted, where we can be higher, where we can be elevated, where we can be up. Not necessarily looking down, hear me now, not looking down on others or looking down on the earth, but being able to see more clearly, getting a better picture, having more information, having all the knowledge that we need in order to soar. Well, I believe that as many of us, I believe that many of us today have the opportunity to help others be able to fly. I believe that there are many here who possibly have fallen out of their nest, shall I say, their situation, their life, their circle, and then just meandering around with people who are not lifting them up, who are not giving them a push, not being encouraging. You know, life can be like that. Then I believe that there are others who have others who come along and try and try and try. And for some reason, our hearts are hardened against that spirit. And for those of you today who have been lifted up by the power of Christ, yes, we have to be the friend in the story. We have to be the friend in the story that goes again and again and again to someone to help them be uplifted. In the story, it says, you are not of the earth, but you are of the sky. Fly, little eagle, fly. He says that to the eagle three times. You are not of the earth. You are of the sky. Fly, eagle, fly. Friends, we are not of the earth. Amen? 
We are a spiritual people. And God has called us to fly, little eagles. <laughs> fly. <laughs> fly, little eagles. Fly. Amen. And amen. Would you sing one verse with me? Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break bread together on our knees. Let us break The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away, our love failed. Your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters and saved Noah and his family and made covenant with every living creature on earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us the commandments and made us your covenant people. When you forsook, when your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and on your holy mountain, he heard your still small voice. And so, with your people on earth, in all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth, glory, glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you. And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. When you, gave, when you gave him to save us from our sin, your spirit led him into the wilderness where he fasted 40 days and 40 nights to prepare for his ministry. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and then gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the remission of sins. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. And so, we have these mighty acts through Jesus Christ. And we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ 
that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in the ministry to all the world until Christ come in victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. may come.
Pastor Ivy gives big pieces of bread, huh? <laughs> I like seeing your faces when I give you that big piece. <laughs> Please join with me in the Lord's Prayer as printed in your bulletin. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us, those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So as we go from here, would you please stand? As we go from here with a greater readiness to serve the Lord even more, more than we're doing now, we have to do more. We have to do more. We have to push those, those eagles that we know so that they can fly. And yet at the same time, in our own flight, we have to look down and see those who are hurting, for God has given us the ability to rise. Amen? Amen. 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 Let us pray. Oh God, grant to us more grace, more peace, more of your comfort. God, as we depart here to be in service, guide us and never let go of our hand. This we pray by the aid of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.